we're going to talk about today why kids should be bored. And I was talking with some other moms about this in our office. Um, we're both chiropractors, if you don't know that. Um, and we are the founders of this place. We made it for brain development and to help people parent and be what we wish that we had. But this is a very big topic because when we're talking about all the different topics we've had, because we've done milk to food, we've done where you sleep, we've done baby wearing, we've done all these things. And the thing that is always the what our point is, is to help you learn the why behind whatever you choose as a parent. Like, why don't I want to do screen time? Is it because I know it's not great? Or is it because... I feel guilty about it or is it really I think I could be more developmentally appropriate in this time and so like let's give you that tool but what it is that we have to work on is the the part of ourselves that's like I'd rather just get this done it'll be easier if you're occupied um, I want my baby to sleep when I'm really young because it'll be easier on me I want to do purees because it'll be easier on me and if that's the choices you have to make in certain situations, this morning my son woke up at 6.45 and I was like, we have to stay quiet. So we decided to watch some Shark National Geographic, which is not what my husband would have chosen if he was up, but he was at Bible study. And Thursday mornings I have the kids and I'm not the morning parent, he's the morning parent. And I was like, let's do this. And so we watched about sharks, we watched about turtles. But then we had some behavior after. But I wanted him to be quiet so his sisters could, could do that. So there's times when you make those decisions that there's going to be screens. But the majority of the time what we want to do is be able to allow ourselves, um, our kids to get bored. And the biggest reason for that is the long-term benefits of that boredom. And this is what I always have to tell myself when I have like, well, it would be really easier if you were just occupied versus I should like really let you have this brain growth is that the more children are bored, the more space they have, the more creative they get to be, the better problem solvers they get to be. And the research shows that the more bored we are, even as adults, creates space in our brain for us to be more creative and to handle. It also makes us more patient with our kids. It makes us better at sleep. It makes us not so snappy at our because when, if we look at ourselves, we analyze ourselves, and my husband was in this TED talk this morning, is that we are addicted to not being bored. We are the ones that think, gosh, I'm at a red light, I should pick up my phone. Man, I want I'm cleaning the house, I really just want, I really just want to have the TV on. Or music, and so we don't give that space to be bored. Um, to ourselves, and so it's hard for us to rationalize having our kids be bored. Welcome. Hi. Nice to see you again. Yeah, I think it's particularly important for the kids who are all right brain dominant too in the beginning, because the right brain is what allows us to have that creativity. But if you don't have any space, it's thinking it's like if our kids' brains is like they're like a canvas. When they're bored, it's a white canvas they can create anything. But if we just constantly fill them with stuff, sound, noise, looks, toys, and it's going to distract them away from being able to create on their own, and they're going to become more reliant on the outside world to meet that simulation and not do their people work, which is just thinking. And so one of the, the tools, so the biggest tool that we can give you, because that's the whole point of this, is like as parents that are a little bit ahead of people, we just want to be like, hey, this is really great. It's worked for us. It's super awesome. Try it out for your family. Not that we're experts in any way. We just have a six-year-old, so we've got six years of education and a lot of books that we've read. But one of the biggest tools is to mastermind with your child what it is that they like to do. That's not so like, what has your child been doing when they've been kind of lost in what they're doing? Is it magnetiles? Is it taking books off the shelf? Is it a, the dog's water bowl? Like, yeah. yeah, right? Every time. And so when somebody says, like, oh, a dog's water bowl, like, my kid could spend 15 minutes there, right? And it's the same about 15 minutes that you'll get with a two and under with a screen is, well, that sounds like your kid is really sensory play oriented. And so one of the things that I would suggest in that time is, well, so what does my one to two year old love? They really love to do water. I would get a Tupperware container, one of those flat ones, and I would fill it with water in cups. And some days I would put different colors of water. Some days you could put bubbles in it. You can make this, I mean, it sounds disgusting, but it is very fun. If you, you know the goo in the can from chickpeas or beans, if you, if you take it out and you put it in a blender with water, 
and a little bit of soap and you blend it, it creates foam. And they love it. It's gross. You're going to hose off your kid afterwards. But they will be busy with it for hours. And there's nothing like two cups and a thing of water that they can just keep pouring and pouring and pouring. Because as we hit 18 months as a child, that kid just wants to do what you do. So if you're washing dishes, honestly what they want to be doing is washing dishes. And so if you gave them a couple plastic dishes, cups, a sponge, <clears throat> and this Tupperware thing, and if you wanted to do it them with them near you because that's where they want to be, put a towel on the ground and let them wash those dishes over and over and over again. And that kind of input makes it so you're like, I just need to do this. If you're cooking, the best thing to do, give them some dry pasta in a bowl and a spoon and let them stir and say, I'm making this or what are you making? And having those conversations with them because when we when we, we want to save the screen for when we absolutely have to use it. So we go on a lot of car trips and a lot of people like immediately put on a screen for their kid. What we do is that we really, we, we push it out to the very bitter end. We're like, all right, here's some books, here's some new crafts. Here's, we have Yodo players. I don't know if you know what this is, but it's like an audiobook player that our kids really adore. But like it, on our way up, we're good. And on our way back, we go through everything. And it's usually about the last hour of our six hour trip that we're like, all right, you have gone completely mad. You've taken your nap. You've used all the snacks. <clears throat> you guys can watch one movie. But we pay for it on the other side of it. But we've also been like, thanks for putting up with the six hour car trip to Atlanta and back. Um, but if you can brainstorm with a little bit of older kids, you can say like, well, what do they like to do? Do they like to do crafts? Do they like to do art? Do they like outside time? I will tell you, um, there will never be a time that your kid doesn't love mud. It's never not going to happen. And so if you can create a space in your yard that is safe for them to have mud, that, that you're fine with them getting dirty, that's a really great opportunity. But that boredom, the thing that we have to fight is one, I'm analyzing how much do I allow myself to get bored? Do I allow myself that space or do I, am I not good at it? Because sometimes working on that yourself is going to be able to help you create that canvas for your kids. But learning that boredom and let, teaching them and having it slowly grow in increments. So based on how old your child is, they may be able to do five to seven minutes. And then as they age, they'll get to 10, and they'll get to 15. If our kids have magnetiles, they are so happy. Around this age, magnetiles are just frustrating. But what's not frustrating is a couple blocks. Our one-year-old was just over here putting the blocks together and trying to stack them. Even though she's just 12 months old, that's something that she can do. But if there's all these toys and all these things, what we all tend to see is that the kids are so overwhelmed, they'll just dump everything out and not play with anything. And then the other tip that we have is to make sure that you have open-ended toys as an option. And so an open-ended toy is a toy that is not only one thing. It can become anything. So blocks can become anything. Magnetiles can become anything. If you have a doll, a doll can be a baby girl. It can be a baby boy. It can be your little sister. It can be your, your like, whatever. But if you have an Elsa doll, it can only ever be Elsa. She can only ever have a sister. We don't know who Elsa's mom is. So if we love Frozen and we have an Elsa doll, then Elsa will only ever be Elsa. So I have friends who will have all of the Disney characters and you'll see their kids playing with them and they're having a great time, but they're only pretending that those characters are who they are. But if you gave those same kids just little people, or little of the things that we have here, they're going to be able to make them a firefighter, a policeman, then it could be an astronaut, it could be anything. There's no limit to what that is. And so in, in here, especially, we only have open-ended toys because we don't ever want it to have to be what it is. You and I would look at that boat and we're like, that's Noah's Ark, right? Like, it's a boat full of animals. But to the kids... It's a boat full of animals. It could be a zoo. It could be anything. If they haven't been told the story of Noah's Ark, that's not assigned anything to them. They're just learning what those animals are, and those animals can interact in a different way, any, any different way. And then 
with our little mini kitchen, if you have your kid and you want to get stuff done in the kitchen, like that's your pain point, having a little mini kitchen for them is great. It's a great place for them to start imitating you and doing what you do. If, you have, they, if it's laundry, give them things to fold. They can fold all of your washcloths. But those are the type of things that your kid between 18 months and three, three to four years, right, just want to do what you do. That's all they want to do. They just want to be a little mommy and a little daddy. And they want to go out with dad and they want to take the trash out. They want to mow the yard. They want to do that stuff. They want to be with their parents doing things. And so if you can incorporate the kid, that's going to be helpful. Or if you can give them an avenue where they are able to mimic you and do those things because our most popular room in this whole place is the little house and every kid goes in there and one of the first thing that they do is they make their mother's and father's food because what do you do for your kids you make them food Aww. you want some space <laughs> Sometimes girls say no, Elix, so just gotta give them yeah. that face. <laughs> How old is your baby? Six months. Six months. Get it, girl. Yeah. Can I see? I think we have two sons. I think there's another son in that basket, but they can't have one. Feel it. But that's really, that's the secret of boredom and the benefits. You have more of the benefits in your head. It's just creativity, problem solving. And the more that you instill in your children when they're one, two, three, and four, the more independent they're going to be at five, six, seven, and eight. Uh, and independent in a good way, not independent in a... I don't, I like, I don't, I don't want to be with my parents. Just more in like a, hey mom, I was thinking I was gonna get out the canvas and paint today, or I want to do that. I want to create this artwork, and we're like, yeah, buddy, go for it. And you've trained them, and you've been with them, so they know like, well, I have to get the water, I have to get the paints, I have to get all this stuff. But messy play is a really great way to hack as you're teaching your kid how to be bored and only giving them those small windows, because there's no child that can go 30 minutes without contact, like that, unless they're unconscious, <laughs> unless they're sleeping. So if it's 10 to 15 minutes that you need, and also, I mean, as a person who gets really frustrated with my kids, I have to tell myself a lot, like, this is the only time I have with my kid to be four, to be six, to be one, and that as frustrated as I am and as easier as it would be just to clean this house or do these dishes, I only have this one more day with them to be this exact age they're going to be older tomorrow and so I have to preach that to myself quite often especially with three kids because I'm feeling crazy most of the time feel crazy yeah I think the, the last thing is that the there sometimes is a push I feel like we're getting away from it in society but there's a push to like push educational learning oh yeah fast uh, includes like how fast can a kid read and learn their alphabet learn their numbers um, and when we were growing up, there was a huge push for your kids going to college and being as smart as they can be. But the world is changing where there's so much information at everybody's fingertips. Where you don't need to be book smart. You need to be able to figure out how do you take all of the pieces of information and do something with it. Problem solving, creativity, and all of that starts being lost now with kids being able to play with blocks and do all this stuff on their own. Uh, and on top of that, social reasoning and empathy, and learning their own behaviors, and even just thinking about us. Oftentimes, I'll catch myself like when I'm doing dishes, I'll put an audiobook on or I'll put something on because I don't necessarily even want to think about my thoughts. I just want to just like when I have something else coming in while I do these dishes. But if we always constantly bombard our kids with that information, then they're not going to have the time to process like. What are they thinking about? What are they? And one of the things that Virginia always says is like, if your kids are staring off in a space like they're building neurons, like don't interrupt that. But we constantly fill our kids' day with stuff to do, and even the paint and all that stuff, mm -hmm. and the magnetism, all of that can be distracting them from just sitting there and just being. Like I feel like all too often we don't just exist. Like we're just we're constantly doing stuff, we're human doings, not human beings. What's the next thing? What's the next thing? What's the next thing? What's the next project? What's the next thing we're going to call it? As opposed to just like sitting and just being. That's a really powerful part of the car. 
is if you can give silent time in the car with your kids and just get in the car and the radio's not on and you're not doing anything and they don't have any toys and they just sit. You can ex and you know that you're going from your house to Publix, you know, to the grocery store, and you know that's a six, seven minute drive. It's not like we're gonna go on an hour drive. Then let your kid be bored. Let your kid look out the window. You, you no radio, no nothing, just sound. And then see what they start to say because what we learned about our kids is that my daughter will talk non-stop from the second we get in the car all the way to where we're going. Whereas my son, when we would pick him up from preschool, he, he would get in the car and he would just decompress. So he would just stare and be silent and not chat at all. And if you were like, hey bud, how was school today? What did you do? He'd be like, nothing, no one, nothing. Whereas Karen is like, so I sat next to so-and-so, and then this happened, and then we did a story about a sheep, a sheep, mom. Like, she'll literally nonstop talk, and that's the personalities of our kids. Our kids are going to act different, be different, but if we don't give them the space to, then we'll never meet them. And so that's, the, and I think that... I, my friend put up a poll and she was like, who doesn't listen to anything in the shower? Like she put up a poll on her Instagram and like everyone was like, what do you mean? She's like, I don't listen to music, I don't listen, I'm just silent in the shower. And so many people were like, you're insane, how do you not listen to music in the shower? How do you not? And it made me think of my husband who literally, no matter what, is listening to a podcast in the shower or a video or something. And I don't listen to anything. I'll take a bath for an hour and a half and with nothing. Like, I will just sit there and, like, be quiet. And a lot of my childhood was, I was born in 1984, was go outside, don't come home until the lights are on. Like, literally, here's a backpack, here's a couple packs of raisins, survive. And that's, and I was like, if you're thirsty, there's a hose. Like, get it. And so my, my life with my little brother was just go out in the forest and figure it out. And we would make up games and we would do all that stuff. And we did not have anything in our schedule. I didn't dance. I didn't do extracurricular activities. We never did sports. Like, I was just alone in my thoughts. I read a lot of books. Uh, and my husband all the time is like, wow, you have a really creative brain. Wow, I can't believe you thought of that. Like, wow, he'll say it all the time. He'll be like, where did you get that? And I was like, it's just in here. And so when we focus on, and then when we use screen time, guys, because screen time can be intentional use, one of the things you want to do before two, really there should be no screen time before two. If you can manage it, the, the research shows that the most damage, I say that in quotation marks, to your kids is done in that first two years. And then after two, you can use it, but what you want to choose is shows that don't overstimulate. So they don't change backgrounds, they don't move, there aren't lots of cam uh, camera angles, it's not bright and poppy. So if you look at Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, it is the most stimulating thing. Your kid will feel insane after Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. But do they sit there and watch it like it's drugs? Yes, they will watch it. My kids, like, they'll see the preview of it. Like, it'll come by if we're going to watch a movie. And they're like, well, let's watch that. And I'm like, no, because you guys are completely gone when you watch it. Whereas if we put on National Geographic and we watch the shark show, Vincent's like, what are they doing? What are, like, we're having conversations. We're talking about what's on there. Another big controversial one, and I'll say it, do not share this on Instagram, Joel, um, is Miss Rachel. So a lot of people love Miss Rachel, and they're like, my kid is learning, my kid is doing all this stuff. No, your kid is super overstimulated. She's moving around, Coco Melon, they're moving around. If your kid can pay attention before two to a show, it's usually because the show has been made to keep their attention by sh moving and, and doing all these different things. And the other side of that is a kid whose nervous system is in fight or flight. And so there's a real like a really cute show on Amazon Prime, which almost everyone is on Amazon Prime. It's like if you give a mouse a cookie. And there's another show called Tumble Leaf. And if you watch those shows, you are going to be reminded of what shows were like when we were kids. Like how Winnie the Pooh was just one background and only the characters moved. How we look at all these different shows. And so those are the things that are super helpful and super 
good for your kid to watch if you need to have a show. So, and there's, it's all over Instagram, like what is the best shows to have my kid where they don't move the camera angle. And even if you go on TikTok or Instagram and you're just like, what shows are bad for my kids? There are people that will put a show up and they'll count how many times they move the screen. How many times the background changes. And so if you give a mouse a cookie, it was like six times in 20 minutes. Whereas it was, the other thing was uh, Coco Melon. And it moved 56 times in two minutes. So looking at those things, those are the things that I would weigh out when you're choosing to do screen time, which again, we do screen time. Our kids use screens. When we had my first kid, he definitely saw screens way more than he should have because I didn't know any better. And he watched a lot of Spanish um, cartoons that were basically Coco Melon esque. Hi, baby. Hi. Um, because they didn't know any better. And so as we learn more, we do better. And we don't, like the kid, no kid is permanently damaged from screen time. But your day can be permanently damaged from screen time. Oh, that must have been so satisfying for him. Hi, <laughs> honey, We can't have that. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much what we have prepared. So we're, we're open for conversation, for questions, for concerns, and any questions. Not even about being bored. If you have a question about some other aspect of parenting, we are we are here for you. I just have like to add on to that. Like my job is literally like in school to work with kids who are gifted, or like, you know, intellectually they have an IQ of like 130. So like. My job is to go in and teach them how to problem solve because they've been, they've been like their parents are like, it's great, you're so smart. Like, and then they get to school and something's hard for them and they break down. And so my job is to kind of go in with like a fun game and, and I always tell parents like play games. They're like, oh no, like they start crying. Like they, they don't like to play games. They have to share. Yeah, that's that's kind of the point to like get them to be reasoning and thinking and um, having that resilience and that grit when something doesn't go right because for them things are really easy most of the time so when that something is hard and they break down um, they don't have those skills so it's really just like the board of our just blocks or things like that it's like now what can we do with this and using their imagination because they've been fed so much or even some of them their parents know this and they started it and they were born with that brain and so they're now learning oh this is hard or they don't have those emotional regulation pieces so I just think that I completely see That's it. very helpful. They see it in the world and they have like they kind of they cut our jobs also. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things where I just feel like it's, it's needed in school and in the world but it's not like one of those first things I've done. Well, and like a lot of people are always like, my, I'm going to get my kid to read. And Harvard did this study. They have this um, whole center for learning. What's it called? Center for child development. child development. So you can Google Harvard Center for Child Development. And they did a study on, do you read better if you read at five versus seven? Like, are you any more intellectually advanced, like the earlier you read? And the answer is no. There is no difference before the age of seven learning to read. And so, like, this whole, you need to be kindergarten ready, and they need to write their name, and they need to be able to identify sight words. It's very detrimental to a lot of kids, especially boys, um, because boys are very, very testosterone dominant and movement dominant until they're seven. And so, right around seven, you get this thing in your brain called the age of reason, and that's when you can differentiate between right and wrong. That's when you can start to read a room and be like, I don't think I should be jumping and running. Like, my son right now has no limitation. He's like, I should run. There's space here. And even though he's like, my mom has told me not to run, the overwhelming thing is, there's a lot of space here, and my body wants to move. Our biggest hurdle right now is that okay. he loves blocks and he loves okay. all that stuff, but he wants to, like right now, even when I got up on my knees, he's like, no, mommy, like he wants me to be like, right, right there. Mm -hmm. So it's like, when he has the screen on, he does still play, but it's like, kind of like places like me being right next to him. Because even if I give him an activity in the kitchen, he's like, mommy, like he wants me to be like on the floor with him. <laughs>
Well, it sounds like you've done an amazing job attaching parenting. So that's the first thing that that's a plus. Of. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things that I would do is maybe put a mirror in the play area so that he feels like he's playing actually with himself. Like, so he has another person in that space. Um, but he probably, he wants to do things with you. And so really, I think if you need to do dishes or cook, I think trying to include him in that would be great. So even if, and letting him get bored in that. So let's say, let's say you're making macaroni and cheese, right? And so you're over there, you've got the water boiling. You show him how you're going to fill up the pot. You show him that you're going to put it on there. You talk about how it's hot. And then you just stand there and wait for the water to boil. Right? And that's the time where you, he's going to be like, Mommy, I'm bored. I want to go play. You say, hey, man, you can go play. Mommy's going to keep waiting for this so we can make our macaroni and cheese. So he might go, and then he'll come back, and he'll be like, I want you to play with me. And then you say, well, I'm waiting for this to boil for mac and cheese. Would you like to see it? And you're going to pick him up, and he's going to be like, oh, I can see it's not ready. Would you like to go play? Would you like for it to boil? And then when it boils, you say, hey, buddy, it's boiling. I'm going to put the pasta in. Do you want to watch me? And he's going to be like, yes, I do. And so you're going to put the boil, and then he's going to be like, what happens next? And you're going to be like, we have to wait for the pasta to cook. Do you want to play while the pasta cooks? Mommy's going to be here. And as you train him in that, he's going to be like, wow, what mommy does is super boring. I am going to leave her alone. Or he's going to shift and he's going to be like, can I help you cook? Because my son thought cooking was boring. But my daughter has cooked with me every day since she was one and a half. And because girls and boys are different. And so... I would show him what you're doing and incorporate it. And he'd be like, okay, I am. I am going to wash dishes. Do you want to wash a dish with me? And you get one of those learning tower things if you need the back. We just use a freaking chair, guys, okay? Our kids well, fall off the chair. He knows how to chair. push a chair over and climb up yeah. the counter. He, want, he wants to be a part of it, so let him be a part of it. Like, And then he's going to get bored after about two dishes. And he'd be like, mama, all done. And be like, well, mama has to finish. You see how much? He's you, like, follow me. Yeah. Okay. And then the other thing is you can just, you can also start to give him some boundaries and just be like, Mommy's talking to another mommy right now, so you can play with these while I do it. And that's we talked about strong willed kids last last week. I should have come to that one. Well we have it recorded on YouTube. Yeah, we're gonna put it on YouTube. Okay. Um but the thing is is that these kids, these kids which we have two of these already. A boundary. So you just have to say, I'm not going to play with you right now. I will play with you in five minutes. And he doesn't know what to do is, but you can set a two minute timer and just start to train him on in two minutes when this sound goes off. And we use visual timers in our house. In two minutes when this goes off, I will, I will do that. And that, and this is totally normal. He's trying to win. You're, he's not a bad kid. He is just being like, I'm angry at you, and I know when I throw this, you're going to react. Yeah. And so you can just take the thing and say, I'm not going to let you throw this. Yeah. Like, this is not all right. It's not safe. You can wait. And that this is the hardest part of being two, is he's mad, and he has no other way to express himself than this because he knows it gets a reaction from you. So you just got to woo and just be like, I'm not going to let you do this. And it's, it gets to the point where sometimes you have to hold their arm to be like, I'm going to talk to this lady right now. And you are going to wait when I'm done. Then, you, then I will talk to you. And so that is what I would encourage you to do. Because the more boundaries you give him, the more he will excel. And you will get that space that you want. But he, he is so used to being like, well, let's do this. And you're like, yeah, let's do this because we're together all the time and it's great. And we don't want our kids to have these big feelings. But he needs some big feelings. But we can, if you give us your um, contact info, we can send you last week's talk. But boundaries is really what he needs. Everything when we have to, like, fix something with our kids, it's us that we have to work on. I repeat. Yeah. And it really is me. Like, I'm like, yeah, I know if I put two on, I really have to have time. Yeah. But he wants to be a part of it more than anything. Siblings. 
because they'll figure out that she's going to be picked up and so can my own thing here. So she's learned real quick. She latches on. They let go. <laughs> Is that your best friend in your... They're uh... <laughs> best friends. They play together all the time. Oh. We're going to be posting all this stuff on YouTube on the Enchanted Cottage. Yeah, can the, strong, your the Strong Will Kids one is up. Um, there's a couple of them that are on YouTube, okay. yeah. Great. Right now, it's Sponsor Chiropractic, but I need to change it to <laughs> both. <laughs> and they're both. Yeah. I always feel like you sound bad that I don't have enough toys. Oh, gosh. And she comes no. here, and then she's like, actually entertained, and I'm like, give me a new toys, and she has like two books, like one thing. <laughs> and she's like, my word. You are totally fine here. Ew, you're chewing the mouth. Um, my favorite oh, is like, oh, the tea bag. I'm like, oh, oh I'm all the time. No, you're okay. So she sees that. Oh, she's like, so okay. Oh, my God. No, I'm here in the water. Well, honestly, like, was it the hot? So, so toys. every baby wants, wants, wants the wires, yeah. and every baby yeah. wants yeah. the yeah. cone because they see us on it. Yeah. So, the yeah. things that you can do is give her a safe wire that's hers to play with, give her a phone case, okay? And that's going to, and she's going to imitate you, right? You could make a computer out of cardboard, and she will play with it. And there's no shame in that being your job, because she's just going to emulate you, especially as we approach one year. She wants to do what you want to do. And at 18 months, she's going to be able to do what you do with you. And so there's not, there's no, she doesn't need more toys. She just needs an empty water bottle. She needs that, she needs stuff that is changing. And that's why she comes here and it's great. Because the, the number one thing that's great about this place is the openness of the space. It's not crowded. They, and so there's so much potential. And then everywhere in all these rooms is open-ended toys. So if you were like... What does she tend to love the most? And if it's really oh, just this wire, then there are um, boxes with strings that you pull out. Like it's like scarves that are tied together, like the Kleenex boxes. Um, love every, I don't know how you say that appropriately, one second. They have a box where it's just you pull out thing after thing and then you reload it and she'll do that forever. It's just like if you gave her a thing of wipes, right? She will pull everyone out until it's over. And so what's happening right now in her brain is called object permanence. And she's trying to see what what do I what what happens when I do this? Yeah, I do have like a basket in the living room. Okay. Everything in it, and she'll just pull everything out. That's what I do. But I think I'm just trying to like revert. I don't want to gravitate towards the phone. Oh, great. So it's like I'm guilty that like I'm not kind of working on these things all day. Uh oh. I'm just trying to. Well, she's gonna learn. She's gonna learn that, and you can just say, "Mommy's working right now," and it's gonna get harder as she gets older because she's gonna demand your attention. And so, working like, well, how does this work? Like, I don't know if you have, you have to work like nine to five. Kind of. I mean, I'm a little more flexible, but it's that many hours. Yeah. And so, with that, you are gonna need to put up boundaries just saying like mommy has to work right now so can you do this and then in this much time I'm going to be able to pay attention to you and so she's going to have to learn because there's a lot of successful ways to work from home and it doesn't mean that you ship out your kid or that you have to get a nanny but you have to teach her and train her because every kid needs to be trained and they need to be shown something somewhere between 12 and 18 times to be able to learn it and so like just like and that's just to learn it. That's not to successfully do it. Because if you think about potty training, that takes a long time, y'all. It takes a long time because we train them to poop in their potty. So then people are like, I just don't know why they won't poop in the potty. I was like, well, you train them to poop in their pants. It's not biologically normal, but you made it okay. So you can make anything okay. And so you can just give her some boundaries. And if you can, pause at what you're doing doing and just like turn and give her a few minutes that's going to be more powerful because kids don't need quantity of time they need quality of time and you'll learn what her things are but if you give her the dog bowl she's great right like you did well, i said that and you nodded so hard so maybe that you work outside and you get her a splash thing on the ground and you give her two cups these really two cups and some water would still make my four-year-old happy 
because she loves to transfer from a bigger cup to a little cup and see it overflow. She loves to refill everything and like just use all the water. Like she just wants to dump and dump and dump. And so if I give her a container and now that she's four, I can say like, if you dump in here, you all have the water for longer. She's obviously not going to be able to get that. But that might be a really good tool for you to be like, all right, you love the dog's water bowl? Let me give you the best water bowl ever. And that'll give you some more space and time. But I don't think you need more toys. I think you just need more toys that awaken her and make her feel alive. And truly, I mean, we give our kids empty water bottles, old wires and stuff that we know won't hurt them. And I just will say, even at six months old, she'll come over to unplug the thing and you'll be like, not these ones, honey these ones and just present the things that are right. Yes, folks. Thank you for waiting so long. Yes. Yeah. A polar bear? Yeah. So would it be like a white fur coat and then polar bear claws? Like, like white. Like white. Like black claws. Okay. Yes. I can't really get done. No, but we'll just like get some fur and make your vest. And then I'll wear a white shirt. And you'll wear a white shirt, yeah. And then you'll get white pants, right? I don't know if we're getting you white pants. You you get pretty messy. No, I mean, it's going to be costume. Okay. Maybe. We'll talk about it. Or we can Yeah. Maybe we could just buy the costume. I don't want to buy the costume. I'd rather make it with you for homeschool. Okay. All right, I gotta go talk to the mommies now. Thanks for waiting. Okay, polar bear mask. Got it. Okay, we'll make a bunch then. Okay. All right, let me talk to the mommies now. All different kinds, all different animals. All right, I love you. Go play. We just start. We're starting homeschool this year, and I was like, we can do anything. And he's like, well, let's make costumes. I'm like, why not? Let's learn how to sew. We can do whatever. I thought we were going to learn about ocean animals. You want to do polar bears? I can swing that. You can do Arctic Ocean. Like, let's go. That's literally my only banner right now is Florida. That's our only, like, ocean, water, fauna, flora. That's it. That's all I've got. Does that help you at all? Yeah. Great. Well, that's it. That's all we have today, guys, for you. We can be anything else you need.